His name, Lieutenant Colonel Mama D. Dumbuya, currently the most famous name in Guinea, of course, after the military coup that took place uh, over the weekend. Um, shocking news, of course, uh, when that story broke here in gunshots all across uh, uh, the, um, uh, the well, presidential palace until it was declared that Alpha Conde was no longer president of Guinea. And of course, uh, we've also seen reactions across uh, the country, seeing uh, citizens celebrating uh, the coup in uh, Guinea. Earlier, we spoke about this, you know, and got to share our thoughts on what exactly this means for the country and how this really uh, shows a lot of uh, the weakness with regards leadership here in Africa and the reaction of uh, citizens a lot of times. You know, and I also got to got to speak about my concerns. You know, when people celebrate a military coup, do they not understand what it means, or do they not? You you know, do they simply not care? Um, and that's what it really shows. And it was one of the things I was talking about earlier. You know, a lot of people do not care in these countries. Um, it doesn't matter what it looks like or what the consequences, uh, you know, uh, likely are. Um, a lot of these citizens in certain African countries do not care as long as that person that they perceived to be a disaster in government um, is thrown out. And so it might be, you know, that they look at this as, oh, finally, you know, breakthrough and, you know, a better country, a better Guinea, you know, in, in the near future. But, you know, it, 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 it always doesn't, know, you know, turn out that way. The African Union has put out a statement, the Nigerian government, the, you know, ECOWAS uh, has also put out a statement. A lot of them also condemning the school in Guinea, but nobody is sure what exactly would play out next, you know, how this would turn out. And the news this morning that was a talk about a transitional government, you know, that will be put in place in Guinea, um, um, hoping, you know, that they, you know, very likely would, you know, set the, uh, the pace for elections sometime in the year. Uh, but nobody can really, really predict what happens next. And I'm also very concerned, you know, I mentioned this also earlier, um, about Francophone countries and why a lot of Francophone countries seem to be breaking down. It happened in Chad, happened in Mali, happened also in Haiti with the assassination of the president. And you would always see the president of France eager to, you know, step in, you know, when there's a new government or eager to step in, you know, and uh, share his thoughts, share his views on some of all these things. But what exactly is going on with Francophone countries and, co uh, you know, co countries that were colonized by France is something that people really, or we need to pay a little bit of attention to and see if there's, you know, there might be a little bit that is hidden uh, beyond, you know, the eyes. You know, in his inaugural address in 2010, Alpha Conde told the people of Guinea that he wanted to be Guinea's Mandela. He wanted to unite every citizen in Guinea and just build a prosperous country. So there was lots of hopes, so high hopes for, for, for Conde's presidency. You know, but people, you know, look back the past few years and say that his tenor, his administration has been anything but like Mandela's. And um, the military say that, you know, that's one of the reasons why they've stepped in. They're saying that they're blaming corruption, endemic corruption, and poverty. Critics are also saying that Alpha Conde has failed to deliver the democratic restoration and ethnic reconciliation that he promised. So this is what we're seeing in Guinea right now. I already announced during our top trending that the um, World Cup qualifiers scheduled to hold in Guinea has been definitely postponed. And the question remains, what next for Guinea? There's always a perfectly you know, sweet explanation for a coup. Um, most coup plotters will always, you know, give pretty much the same reason. Coups all across the world here in Africa and beyond always are blamed on corruption and mismanagement of government and some of all of that, and that's why they are taken over to restore power and to, you know, you know give the country, the, the citizens, the country that they deserve. And, you know, nine out of ten times it doesn't turn out that way because a lot of these school potters really aren't ready for government. They don't understand what it means to actually govern. Um, and, you know, people have pointed that out also in, in the Afghanistan uh, story that, you know, you, you can, you know, take over power. But do you understand what this new responsibility is? It's not just about being in control and kicking away uh, Ashraf Ghani. You need to understand what, you know, next you need to do for the people. And you should be capable because eventually the people are going to tell you that you failed. And, you know, it's pretty much the same thing with Guinea now and Mali and with Chad and every other country that has had to deal with some of all of this. Uh, um, um, in uh, South Sudan also, you know, we've had to deal with this multiple times. Um, but another thing that I would mention is the promises made by people when they take over power. Alpha Conde made these promises, eventually, you, you know, found himself, you know, stealing the third term, um, which was initially unlawful. 
he found himself doing that because, of course, he probably got power drunk and you know, realized that he, he didn't want a life outside the presidency anymore. He did that. Um, and the, the, the Guinean people have obviously not been able to you know, greatly benefit from the presence at the, or the time that he has been in, in government. I would also mention in Haiti, um, um, the pre late president of Haiti pretty much did the same thing. You know, when he, he got into the power for a very, very long time, he campaigned from the outside. He was a, he was a favorite to eventually win. And when he got into, there, into power, um, the, the stories of corruption in Haiti were hard to imagine. If you remember the 2010 earthquake in Haiti, uh, uh, you know, that uh, you know, led to the loss of thousands and thousands of lives, billions of dollars were donated for uh, the country to be able to fix the country and put them back on their feet again. Um, there has been an ongoing corruption case um, concerning those billions of dollars that just never seem to do anything. Nobody seems to know where that money went or what happened to all those funds that were donated for Haiti. And, you know, that's where, of course, you know, the president was, was, um, uh, was mentioned. Um, his companies, his cronies, his political friends, a lot of all of them were blamed for the same corruption until his assassination sometime this year. And so um, promises, you know, will never run out of promises. There's only a few countries in South, in Africa, general, that you can look at and say, okay, well, there is some, some, some you know, sense of leadership here. Yeah, there is some sense of, you know, of, of progress with regard to leadership. But a lot of these countries, there's, there's not really much um, uh, to hold um, um, uh, there. Um, luckily, there's, you know, a few of them that you can look at and say, okay, they still have at least some institutions, some democratic institutions that are able to checkmate government. And you look at that and, you know, maybe look at South Africa and look at what's currently going on with, um, with um, Jacob Zuma from President of, of South Africa. You can also look at, you know, the Ghanaian president and see that there is, you know, some semblance of institution um, that puts government in check. Cyril Ramaphosa over the weekend, as one of the stories I took here on Saturday, um, had to address, you know, his parliament uh, after he was questioned on certain things. We don't get to see a lot of that, well, sadly, here in Nigeria. Um, so best of luck to the people of Guinea. We hope that there is actually a transitional government. Well, we hope, or, or you know, rather, that the ECOWAS and the AU and every other country on the outside is able to find a way to influence and to you know, create some calm and ensure that this new lieutenant corner who has taken over power you know, understands what it what is at stake. Mm, indeed, that's that's really what we have hope because when we look at the Mali situation, that junta that ousted um, the administration of President Ibrahim Bobaketa in Mali in August 2020. Um, it's, it still seems to be a mess. I mean, they set up an 18-month transitional um, government with the military, you know, heading that. Elections are due in February 2022. So you see how long and how much time it's taken. And there's still pressure from international partners to make sure that, you know, they stick to the election timetable and the deadlines and all of that. So for something that's relatively fresh, happened just on Sunday in Guinea, it's safe to say that when we look at, you know, what happened in Mali, the situation in Guinea might continue to hold sway. The military might continue to hold power in Mali for the next one year. Yeah, well. Sorry. All right, let's uh, wrap it up here this morning. Thank you very much for being a part of our Monday morning, the 6th of September, 2021. It's been The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We do this every weekday, Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. West African time. I am Annetta. Felix, thank you for joining us. And of course, if you missed out on any of our conversations this morning, remember to catch up on our um, social media platforms at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And same with our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Have a very interesting Monday ahead. The news comes up next at 9 a.m. I am Osao Gi Ogbonwa.